Hello and welcome to this video about fitting LED instrument bulbs. This is video 125 in our series of XK videos. In this video we're going to show you how we trialed and compared various LED bulbs against the standard incandescent uh, bulbs on our Jaguar XK dashboard. The results were quite interesting and we're happy to share, you with, share the results with you and uh, compare the different findings. As per our usual format, we split the video into six sections. Section one, the quantity and type of bulb. Section two, the removing of the bulbs. Section three, the actual LED bulbs we, sh we chose and the various sizes. Um, section four, finding the positive terminal of your LED bulb, a bit of a top tip there. Section five, uh, comparisons of the different results of the different bulbs. And section six, a bit of a bonus, it's worth waiting for that, um, some LED sill covers and some input from James uh, Lucas and his uh, interior. If you're watching this video, you're obviously interested in Jaguar XK, XK hours. Take a look at our channel, ONDR Modular, lots more content on in there about that vehicle, particularly X100s. Back to the video then. Section one, the quantity and type. So there are basically two types of uh, bulb and holder on your Jaguar XK dashboard. There's T10, which is basically the 10 millimeter bayonet bulb, uh, rated at three watts. And with a holder, it's sold by Jaguar under part number LJA4390BA as white. And then there's a T5, the smaller bulb with a five millimeter wide bayonet. Uh, that's 1.5 watt rated bulb. With the holder, the white bulb, Jaguar part number is XR83865. And as a blue, blue bulb, it's uh, LJA5180CA. In the main instrument cluster, the main dials, the main three dials, there are four T10 uh, bulbs and four T5. The cluster in my XK, XK8, the part number is lja 439 Zero CA, obviously supercharging later cars, have a slightly different red line on the uh, tachometer, so they'll have a different part number. If you look at the back of the main instrument cluster, there's bulbs uh, distributed. Uh, the four main T5 are sort of equally distanced between the fuel and temperature gauge, the right hand side of speedometer, etc., and the rev counter. And the bottom T5 bulbs are actually. Uh, warning bulbs, there's a right indicator, high beam, the message center and the left indicator. Obviously there are a lot more other uh, messages and warnings. Uh, those actually bulbs are LED bulbs soldered to the main circuit board. Uh, removing and changing those is a bit more involved as it's not covered in this video. The three dial cluster then is a little bit more simple. There's just two T10 bulbs in the middle there. Uh, the cluster on my car, as I say, the part number is LJB4310BA, and that's fairly common through the whole uh, XK8 XKR range, I believe. Those two bulbs are actually midway between the battery gauge, the clock, and the oil pressure. There's not one bulb per dial. Uh, section two, removing the bulbs. In order to remove the bulbs, obviously you need to get the instrument packs out or the instrument clusters out of the car. It's not directly covered in this video because I've made a, uh, a detailed video previously, video 124, a guide to changing the instrument bulbs, which it goes into all the detail how to get the uh, gauge clusters out and actually change the bulbs. So I'm not going to cover that in this video. What I would say, I didn't mention it in the video previously, but Gary Van Remortel re reminded me, uh, you need to disconnect the battery when you're messing about with the gauge pods or the clusters, uh, dial uh, pods, whatever you want to call them, because there is a chance of uh, blowing stuff up. How I did it, I actually, you could either uh, keep the ignition off, or in my case, I, I took the precaution of disconnecting the battery every time I, I took the cluster out and changed the bulbs. So, first of all, removing the bulbs, you just need to turn them anti-clockwise. However, there's some anti-rotation clips stopping you doing that by hand. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to do it by hand, and hence you need a pair of pliers. 
just to defeat those anti-rotation clips and the bulb pops out it literally as easy as that you can see the little cutouts in the aperture which the uh, anti-rotation clip locates in there um, if you take the bulb and the bulb holder you can see those anti-rotation devices just there on each side of the bulb holder there you go that's what stops the things uh, falling out uh, during um, the car moving and the, the vibration occasionally the bulbs don't register not because they're blown but because these little uh, contacts can be a little bit out of position so it's it's a good idea just to tweak them as I did there with a the screwdriver to make sure you get uh, good contact so just just to re-emphasize that on each bulb holder there are two anti-rotation or uh, uh, devices and you need to use your, uh, a pair of pliers to remove them the actual two there are actually two bulbs as I say T10 and T5 and here they are both have those anti-rotation features and they're basically identical other than the size to actually remove the bulbs uh, from the holders you literally just have to get a good grip and pull them out they don't come out easily uh, there's a good uh, spring clip in there but they are removed and you just find they are standard T5 and T10 bulbs that was a T5 bulb if you move to the T10 same procedure it needs to just pull it out again they don't drop out obviously you don't want them vibrating loose they're a tight fit in there and uh, replacing is just as easy so again the holders are bespoke um, to this uh, the, the, the instrument pods but the bulbs are standard albeit you know you need to find the correct wattage because they aren't the same wattage as the T10 used on indicators for example so I actually chose to use some LED bulbs but we'll go in more detail on that now section 3 then LED bulbs and their sizes so we chose a couple of types of LED bulb um, we chose a white and a green one both in T10 and T5 size I actually bought uh, these uh, six LED uh, T10 bulbs from eBay and they were about 5.95 for 10 and they're reasonably high power there's a lot of oomph in those five LEDs uh, I did buy 10 of these smaller T10 bulbs and these are a little bit cheaper at 4.98 for 10 but they aren't as bright and uh, they weren't really satisfactory for what I was looking for so I discounted these straight away uh, the T5 bulbs I had a couple of choices again there was these bulbs I bought with three LEDs again these are high power uh, £7.76 for 10 very very bright and I bought these in green I also bought these other T5 LED bulbs these are the cheaper ones £5.96 for 10 but they're not as bright and real realistically when you're buying LED bulbs the number of LEDs on them is not directly proportional to their light output but it does give you a strong indication how bright they're going to be if it's only one led on there it's not going to be as bright as one with five is a rule of thumb i say it's not strict rule but it's a good rule of thumb the actual bulb was roughly 18 millimeters uh, from the edge and from the shoulder there it's roughly 15 millimeters so the bit that counts really is the height from the uh, bulb holder shoulder to the top a normal incandescent bulb was 15 millimeters and the LED the bright LED bulbs I chose to use the ones with five LEDs were 18 millimeters um, so I had to look whether the it would take that bulb so I looked inside the apertures and see what would be fouling if anything and if you look inside you can see inside the instrument cluster there's a little lens that helps to, must help to distribute the light to the gauges so I thought to myself well how far is that into the gauge how far can the bulb go in so I took my trusty caliper 
and uh, dropped it in there and got a measurement 20 millimeters 20 millimeters I did the same for the smaller cluster you can say see again there's little lenses in the bottom what a snazzy idea what a good idea would you like it? again I measured that distance and this was again 20 millimeters just checking yeah so there's obviously a standard for those gauges 20 millimeters so I've done this a bit of a, a sketch here so this is how the it's very very tight that LED but it does fit it fits sort of in the triangulation of that uh, uh, lens and uh, the LEDs just about fit it's roughly 20 millimeters to the lowest point there and the um, LED bulb is 18 so it just nestles in there albeit quite tight section 4 then finding the positive so this is a bit of a tip save you a lot of time the lower contact on all the gauge pot is the positive contact for your bulb so in order to save yourself lots of time you can make a note that the positive on the three gauge pod is at the bottom and also the main instrument cluster all the positives again is at the bottom so what I did was I actually worked out what's the positive side of each LED using an old battery and a bulb holder I basically put the bulbs in the bulb holder and it should light up in that case it didn't light up so I swapped it round uh, to the other side get it in focus and hopefully it should light up now oh there you go it's lit up so I know the red side is the positive so I took my marker pen and marked it. it's quite difficult one-handed this one-handed camera and stuff is a nightmare so that side is a positive this I found this saved me lots and lots of time taking the gauge clusters in and out of the car so I'm not whenever I fitted the LED bulbs they're always perfectly aligned and they always lit up okay so it's a bit of a top tip so then refitting the bulbs I'll say this is my green bulb marked with a nice red sorry uh, black line where the positive is fit it in and find put leave that to the lowest part of the gauge and there you go it's fitted and I know that's going to light up as long as the LED isn't blown and without any problems saving massive amount of time section five then the comparisons this is a bit everybody's been waiting for uh, I'm comparing normal white bulbs with LED white and green bulbs I did this in a sort of in a best way I could I tested them in the garage in daylight uh, to give you an idea what they look like in daylight and actually with the car cover over the top so it's semi darkness so this is the bulbs in daylight normal bulbs in daylight as I say the center console you can hardly see turn the lights on you can just about see them I'm turning the the uh, the brightness up and down and you can hardly see any any bulbs to be honest there you go. let's turn the brightness there's the brightness up you can just see a green tinge possibly on the gauges there central gauges yeah a little bit of green coming through possibly when the lights are there I mean, in the center console you can't tell if they even on it's absolutely useless that so there you go that's the normal bulbs in daylight this is the same test with the uh, car cover over the top semi darkness again turn the lights on interestingly you can't have the dimming function of the gauges without the lights on the dimming function is only available that's with them dimmed that's with them brighter dim brighter these are the ordinary bulbs so I'm doing this so you can get like a baseline there you go you can see the reason to be bright and the center console they are bright and dim so that's the baseline if you would of normal bulbs and this is the message center you can see here with the normal bulb again we're comparing that and there's no flickering which is an important thing if you look at the next lot so this is the white LED bulbs in daylight turn the lights on you can see the 
gauges start to have, take a bluey tinge. Center console obviously the same. Blue tinge now. As I say, I turn the brightness up definitely a little bit bluer. The green bit of the dial indicator seems to be washed out by the white LED. As I say, the center console doesn't seem to change with the brightness. So definitely like a whitey blue tinge to the gauges. In the darkness, so with the car cover on, you can definitely see the gauges have this bluey tinge. It, it stands out more against the center console, which is still green. So the, turn the brightness up and down. Brightness up and down. And the center console brightness up and down. I say the uh, when you put the white LED bulbs in the gauges, it bleaches the green indicators into a light blue, and it makes it a bit different to the center console. That doesn't look quite right. And in particular, you notice the KPH uh, readout in the center of the myelometer or speedometer is still remains green. Interestingly, although the outside has turned a light blue. This is the message center and the high beam and the indicators. I changed these for LEDs too. They're quite a bit brighter. I apologize I didn't do that with the normal bulbs, but they are a little bit brighter. I thought that would be particularly interesting because uh, I'm forever going down the road with an indicator still on because they don't hardly make a noise at all, albeit I've repaired the speaker. still doesn't make much of a noise. This is the uh, white LED in the message center. It's got a, it doesn't quite pick it up with this camera shot, but it does have a slight flicker, which really put me off. But it is a little bit brighter, but not overly so. Now, here's the green LEDs in the daylight. You can see I've just turned the lights on. Immediately, the dials look green. There, sorry. You see, in center call, so I can't see anything. But the dials definitely have a green. I'll turn the, um, the dimming up and down. That's it up and down, up and down. Definitely see the difference. Green again, down and up. And the center console, you can't really tell in the daylight, to be honest, the difference. I don't know why I keep showing that because I, don't, I haven't done anything with the center console yet, albeit I intend to if this is a success. So there you go. The green LEDs do seem to light up really nice. So let's have a look at the dark with us. So here we have the green LED bulbs again. Center console. What I find is it doesn't look immediately out of place. They are a little bit brighter green. I'll turn the lights on again so I can dim the, the instruments down. So that's very bright. And that's dim. Bright and dim. Obviously, I haven't got the... Um, the veneers on at the moment so it will look slightly different with the veneers on again center console bright and dim i have an opportunity to replace some of the led the bulbs in the center console with leds but i'm not quite sure how many they are at the moment so i wanted to keep a similar color to the original ieb green so i was quite happy with those green colors this is the the green center console and so uh, message center and indicators really bright bulbs now. Really happy with that result, albeit the message center is I think a bit overly bright. It's sort of washed out now. You can see here in the daylight there's a definite flicker on the uh, the message center, and it is a bit too bright. I did actually think that the flickering was coming from the battery not being uh, clamped down because I kept I, I kept it relatively unclamped because I was taking it on and off so often. But I did uh, actually clamp it up properly for the one time and it was still flickering. So it wasn't a contact issue. I think it's just the bulb doesn't like that message center for some reason. Uh, it wasn't too bad with the lights off, but once the lights were on, it was definitely uh, finding it difficult to handle. So this is a, the summary then. I've this is just the pictures of the normal bulbs against the center console. You can see it all is very coordinated. 
this one is the white LED bulbs for the center console. As I say here, the um, the sort of uh, the markings around the outside of the dials do take whatever color of LED bulb you have. In this case, it was white, but they tended to go blue. When I used the green LED, they all went green, and uh, it's not too out of um, sync with the center console. So I was quite pleased with this. So if, um, if you want a little bit brighter set of instruments, but don't want to go too far away from the color, take a look at green LEDs. It does seem to do the job, albeit avoid changing the message center. So there's the um, summary of them all. The top is the normal bulb. The center uh, set is the uh, white LEDs and the bottom is the green. So I know which one I'm going for, albeit it's not uh, the correct shade of green, it is not far off. This is a comparison of the message centers. You can see the normal bulb, the not quite, uh, the middle ground is sort of the, the not quite as bright white bulb and the finally the very bright green bulb. I think I'm going to stick with the uh, the normal bulb for this particular one because it won't be too out of line with the uh, the aircon readout and I think when you put the brighter bulbs in it does tend to wash out the actual message so section 6n the bonus uh, this is the bit I've hopefully you've been waiting for this is uh, James Lucas's red sill covers and red interior so James, he's I've got I think it's a black XKR with a black interior, and he's got a red theme in his car, and he's predominantly used red LED bulbs throughout. This is a picture in daylight, albeit with a flash, which is not the best, but you can see here quite clearly all the dials indicators have all turned gone red. He's got a red aftermarket Kenwood uh, CD DVD player in, and he's took a lot, a lot of time to change all his um, console um, buttons and readouts to red and there's quite involved that isn't a two minute job and it, it looks really good well done James in the, the dark you can really see it in full effect uh, all everything is red if you like red this is the way to go but I say it's not easy to do um, one thing I noticed is that the aircon readout isn't uh, on because that, that's a little bit more difficult to change from green uh, to red but well done James well done James and the icing on the cake the icing on the cake is all the footwell is all um, uh, on the uh, interior lights are all red as well but also these great sill covers light up XKR sill covers actually light up and this is um, not something you can buy. This is something James has developed for his own sort of uh, entertainment or his own little project. And he's actually made these himself. Unbelievable. And uh, how resourceful is this? So if you take a closer look at uh, James's LED sill covers, the construction is basically the stainless uh, steel top. He's took a normal sill cover and he's actually laser cut the Jaguar logo into it very cleverly. He's then created a sandwich of stainless and aluminium uh, and um, LED strip lighting and then dropped epoxy resin into the letters to produce his fantastic uh, illuminated Jaguar logo. Uh, absolutely one off. Uh, it's a one off and it's absolutely superb. And it really goes with all these other um, red LEDs in his interior. The icing on the cake. Well done. Absolutely superb. So. I think uh, James was um, uh, thinking he might try and manufacture, but I think through the process of doing it as a project, he's realized it's quite involved and uh, it's just a one-off thing for him. Um, thanks very much. That's the, um, the video complete. Um, the quantity, quality and quantity and type, removing the bulb dimensions, finding the positive, the comparison and the bonus and the sill covers. Thank you very much for Phil uh, Priest. Sorry, Pre uh, Phil, I, I mispronounced your name in the previous video uh, for actually mentioning LED bulbs and sending me on this mad tangent, as I do always, and going into far too much detail about something very minor. And thank you very much for James Lucas for send me, sending me all those photographs and spending so much time and enthusiasm 
enthusiasmized car to produce that one-off red interior. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, share and subscribe if you'd like to see more Xcade videos.